I think there's a lack of information and knowledge around the menopause for lots of women and their families and loved ones. And that is because I think it's still a taboo subject, um, combined with not really knowing where to turn to for information. Um, but I think that can be part of the, us to change that, you know. I talk about with my husband and my daughter. Um, I think talking about it breaks it to be, yeah. It's the first time I really thought about the menopause was when I was having a conversation with a friend, Lisa, and um, we'd just been away for the weekend together and we were sitting down and having some food and we began to talk about periods, actually. It was Lisa that said to me, what's happened to you, you know, what's happening? Your period's a bit like this, you know? And um, we were discussing this kind of heavy flow and how they just suddenly stopped. And um, we were just, what's that about? You know, maybe this is the beginning of change, you know, the, the change and things changing. Um, and after that conversation, I started to really think about it. I thought, well, I'm only 40. I was, you know, not thinking really I was anywhere near that. The word perimenopause didn't exist at that point either, or maybe it did, but I wasn't aware of it. Um, I'd never spoken to my mother about that stage in her life. So I went away and I started doing a little bit more reading about it. I didn't really have any symptoms initially, but other than emotional ones, because I was in complete denial initially, that I was like, oh no, but I you know, don't want to tell people my age and like, I'm, I'm menopausal. Or, and probably it was about six or nine months later that I then began to experience you know, the flushes, the heat that everybody talks about. And I was like, oh yeah, I am now menopausal. It's now nine months since I had a period. It's now a year since I had a period. And, I'm feeling a flush just now. I'm saying I'm, you know, I'm in denial of it, but you know they're just like li little, mm -hmm. they're just little um, inklings, and um, I don't know. Makes me feel younger because it's just like I feel like I'm blushing. So, well, I had an early menopause. My my menopause was at 41, and that was as a result of surgery, as I'd had endometriosis and fibroids and a couple of ovarian cysts. So my life up to the age of 41 as regards my gynaecological health had been rather problematic. I left hospital with, with two pieces of information. Refrain from sex for six weeks and don't lift anything heavier than a kettle of water for six weeks. And menopause was not mentioned. It was, bizarrely enough, it wasn't even on my radar screen. My mother had, by her own account, sailed through her own menopause and it never occurred to me it would be a problem. I just thought, well, I'm not having periods anymore. That's it. Palpitations, insomnia, when you've got insomnia, nothing works. I mean, you know, nothing. Forgetting to pick my kid up from school wasn't nice. Forgetting to go to work. You know, clients phone and saying, um, are you late? Are you on your way? And anxiety, lots of anxiety. Lots of mental effects on mental well-being, which were, you know, in hindsight, quite, quite big. When I think actually we tend to get caught up or, you know, the, the obvious things that are talked about are the kind of physical things, like the parts of our body. I experience mental rage, um, brain fog. I get very, very, very forgetful. Um, in the last year, the aches and pains have got a lot worse. And, and also feeling of, um, almost feeling of kind of cystitis coming on as well, which has been quite irritable and just uncomfortable. Initially, I, I wasn't having hot flashes and night sweats. My symptoms were predominantly emotional, psychological. So depression, panic attacks. I had never had a panic attack before in my life until I was, I was probably 45. And I remember standing in the lab and I thought I'm having a heart attack. Along with the, then the psychological issues, the physical symptoms started, so I picked up gingivitis twice in a year, and I'd never had a problem with my gums before. And dry skin, I had issues around dizziness. Um, I mean, eventually vaginal dryness became a problem. And that's something that, that I find women are really, really reluctant to talk about. And it's not, for me, it wasn't actually what I thought it was, if that makes sense because the term vaginal dryness, I think most of us would assume it's an external issue, but 
it's internal as well. And I, internal examinations became very uncomfortable. I was bleeding as well. I started bleeding a couple of years after surgery, which I wasn't expecting as a result of, of low estrogen. That's quite exhausting. Um, and that in itself brings a little bit of low mood, um, a little bit of that kind of feeling lost or kind of lack of oomph, that feeling I just can't be bothered. There's days when I'd like to just go to bed, have a duvet day. Um, and I've had women describe it as wanting to disappear into a cave, actually. And I totally, <laughs> that just resonates with me incredibly, actually. Just I, wanting to disappear from the world, I could disappear now for a few years and come out the other side. I go to my bed really early you know, at night and I actually I have difficulty getting up in the morning. So I, I do definitely have physical symptoms. I really like sleep. And yeah, I get some hot flushes at night, but they just keep me warm. It's you know, kind of cosy. Um, and I quite enjoy it now. But so socially, I find that, you know, I can just suddenly get to stages like I'm going to turn into pumpkin. It's like 10 o'clock and I'm like, OK, got to go. And I'll be in the middle of a sentence. Not that we're doing anything socially just now anyway. But um, it's just like a switch has been switched and it's like, okay, enough, go. I didn't really have men or age, I had men or sob. I did have moments um, that literally, it, I felt like I'm one of those cartoon characters where my head would just explode and my, you know, there was like steam coming out my head and it, it really was a burst. Hypersensitivity, kind of oscillating, um, thousands of tabs open up in your head and um, trying to navigate a new space that you, and you, you, don't, you really don't know who you are. At one point I actually thought I was losing my mind. Not nice at all. And I know I'm not alone in that. Um, there was an incident a few months ago where I decided I would get an ax and a saw <laughs> and change the garden. <laughs> I just had one of those days. And uh, my oldest, he's, uh, he's nearly 13, just turned around to me and said, Mum, is this helping your men are age? You know, and I just said, yeah, it really is actually. It's really, I must, just must do this more often, get an axe out. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it has, but it's meant there's a dialogue at home. Um, and I'm lucky I've got quite an understanding husband, although I, you know, that's something that is difficult actually. I'm not interested in sex. I'm not interested in that side of an emotional relationship. And that's connected to some of the symptoms I'm experiencing as well. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's affected all my relationships. It was, it was actually the acceptance of things are changing, things are going to change and I'm going to have to start letting go of this and I can't, I can't multitask the way that I used to. Um, and now like I'm really celebrating that. So I'm just doing what I want to do and what um, seems the right thing for me to do now. Menopause has completely changed me. It, it changed my relationships with others. It's changed my relationship with myself. Menopause taught me the value of friendships. It taught me that being authentic and honoring my core values is far more important than pleasing other people, doing things just because they're expected of me. Over my life, I've always been dancing around other people and wanting to please other people. And I think that's a really common theme about people pleasing and just not, it's a Scottish thing as well, telling yourself you're not thinking of yourself and you're always thinking about other people. And then suddenly I think you become more important. I think menopause has changed my attitude to my relationships and I've become so much more grateful of the friends that I have. The Japanese refer to menopause as the second spring. And I love that analogy. Post-menopausal zest is the thing where we don't have to worry about periods and flooding and tampons and everything else that, that came along with, with periods. It, it really can be a fantastic time in our lives if we get the right help when we need it. I think for younger women, I'd say, and probably not too young, I'd say it's almost like a second puberty. You know, you're going through this second stage of fluctuating hormones and unfortunately you have to do it when you're youngish. I don't know, it's around 12, 13 for a lot of girls these days. And then there's the other end and no one tells you about this other end. And just have it in the back of your mind. 
I think. Just have a, a, you know, an acknowledgement that this is, this is something that will happen. And perhaps even have a conversation with somebody in your family. You know, if your mum's not still around, an aunt or another elderly, I should say, or older woman that can pay, perhaps just paint a picture or give you an idea of what, what's possible, what might happen. Because actually it can hit you like a bus. Get ready and um, speak to other women. Speak to your mum, if you've still got her, your granny, and, um, and you know, get fit, not fitter, just, you know, get your body ready and your mind and kind of look at it. It is going to happen. It might not. You might go sail through a great menopause, but you might not. Um, and I think that way we can help build a bit of a community as well. Now I'm just, I'm in this lovely stage of life where actually I just don't care. <laughs> I don't care what people think of me. Um, I'm not worried as much about how I look. Um, you know, I do like to dress up still. I do like to enjoy putting some makeup on and, and feeling comfortable and confident, but I'm just actually not that bothered. There's a sense of letting go, I think, a sense of freedom, which is just fantastic. Now I can say menopause has been a positive effect for me. My kind of journey, if you like, has led me here to doing what I do for myself and other, lots of other women. And not just, not just other women, you know, workshops that I do are for families, you know. Um, so, yeah, very much so now I am in the more f forward phase. It's very liberating, yeah. I've probably never felt better in my life. It's a time that I just, I don't need to worry about my, my future. I don't need to worry about what other people think about me. It's easy. It's just easy to be yourself. It's almost like you're back to what you were like when you were younger. You just, you're just you. And um, I think Zeus said that, just be, be the you that you can be.